new test. It's not a weird test. Um, it's probably new for us as a class, but this is the standard way of testing to see if data fits a particular distribution of any kind. And we use the chi-square to evaluate how it fits. We use the Poisson, in our case, as the model to, to predict the expected values. So um, it's just a one-way chi-square test. The problem is the data is, in course, a bit tricky. If you're a bit of a math head, this is all familiar to you. If you thought math worth 113 was the end of the road for you, this is going to be a bit uh, puzzling. But let's work through it. So here we're going to go from trees in quadrants on the left-hand side over here. And we're going to go from there to um, number of trees in quadrants here. And we're going to go to the number of quadrants with that number of trees in it. That's going to be a little bit tricky. I'll label that here, right? Number of quadrants observed with no trees, with one tree, with two. How many quadrants of two trees? All right, that's what we're after. Now, the observed part is a couple ways of doing it. You could go through and count. So the number of quadrants with zero trees would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight. Now, your data set's big. Big data is the future of ecology, so might as well learn to do it a different way. What we're going to do is use a pivot table. And a simple, simple pivot table, I'm going to go to, um, you can't see this because my recording screen is small. I'm going to go to the insert button there. And then I'm going to go to, I'm going to go insert my pivot table somewhere over here where it's safe. Let's make a little space here. I want to keep these things close to me where I can see them. Let's put it right there. Actually, I'll probably just put it in another sheet. Pivot table, data range. I'm just going to click the entire A group over here, OK? And then I'm going to go into a uh, new worksheet. Let's just put it in a new worksheet to keep it off of this desktop. Now it looks like this. This is also, OK, a little bit tricky. What you see are these fields, and you have some data. You only have this piece of data here. It's not that much. Um, number of trees and quadrants, and what you might do is do something to those values, like sum them. Um, it looks like it's keeping the data that I already had in here from the previous run. You can drag this data in to some values right there, right? Which is what I have. Oh, it's there. Now, but I don't really want to sum those values. I'm also going to put rows, trees and quadrants. I want those on rows as well. Now what you can see is the rows are each um, category of tree, and each uh, of these is the sum of the trees and quadrants. That doesn't look very good. That's not what I want. But yes, it is. OK. Now, what I'm going to do is just change this values thing down here. I'm going to grab this pivot table field and try to bring it over closer to me so I can look at it. I'm going to go to I right there and click that. Now, instead of summing all these things, the sum of trees, I'm going to use the, uh, the count the numbers. I'm going to count the number of trees in each quadrant abundance category. That's starting to look pretty good. Now, for row label that has no, for no trees, there are eight quadrants. For one tree, there are eight quadrants. Notice that some of them have been left out. There's not, there's no five quadrants, there's no sevens. So I've got to remember that when I move this data over. All right, but that is a quick way of counting all of these trees. There's 39 observations that everything fits with what I would expect, except that there are not quite enough um, cells. So I have to add in the observed. Now here I'm going to control paste or right click paste special. I'm going to place specialist values because I don't want that whole pivot table. And I'm going to remember that there were no fives and there were no sevens. So that means I'm going to drag these things down and make a little space here. There was no five and there was no seven. I must be missing one more. Let's check it out. Zeros. There's a one, two, three. I don't have a four or a five. 
Yeah, so let's make sure that three, there's eight threes. And there's no fours and no fives. So let's go back and fix those. No fours and no fives and no sevens, and that should bring us down to the most abundant one, which had 10. Okay, that's a little bit tricky to do. So we'll put zeros and zero and zero. There were no quadrants observed that had only four trees or five trees or seven trees. Um, and we didn't have any with 11 trees, so we can get rid of that one down there. Okay, so that is our data for the observation. The expected is going to be a little bit trickier. We're going to use these equations over here. Remember, E is the base of natural logarithms. I'm going to use the number 2.718 in there. Um, and this is the proportion of quadrants expected to have zero earthworms, one earthworms, two earthworms, that sort of thing. And there, these are going to come up with the proportion. So this is the probability, essentially, associated with a particular um, category in here of abundance. And so I'm going to start out, I'm not going to start in the zero category, and I'll show you why in a few minutes. I'm going to start in this one category. So I'm going to write an equation in here that looks like first thing is going to be in that equation is going to be E. So this is P sub 1 is going to be 2.718. I tried it earlier and the computer did not like um, my E symbol. Raised to the power of the negative of raised to the power of. When I get to the raised to the power of, I'm going to write raised to the power of parentheses negative of the mean. So I need a mean value. Geez. Better get out of there. The formula's missing. I understand. Won't let me stop. I'll just put in the mean. And then um, negative mean. So it gave me a problem. So I'm going to calculate the average up here. Annotating so everyone can read that equals average. And I'm going to do the average of everything in column A right there. Two point seven nine. So now I'm going to go back and fix my equation. Negative, and instead of the mean, I'm going to put I'm going to put two point seven nine four eight, or I can put this cell right. I'm going to dollar sign that cell because I never want it to change. That's always the average. All right, that's negative the average. So given the mean, um, and the variance of course is equal to the mean and the Poisson, um, and then I'm going to go times. Now I'm going to take all of that and I'm going to multiply it times. Um, the mean to the x. So I'm going to put parentheses and I'm going to click on the mean again. I'm going to raise that mean to the x power and this time I could put in x or I could put in 1, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to collect C, the C8 cell. So that's the cell there. because I'm going to drag this down and when I do that number is going to change it to 2. It's going to be awesome. All right, and I'm going to divide that value by um, I'm going to put parentheses in here in case there's some concern of the order of operations, and believe me, there sometimes is. So um, that's d2 raised to the power, and that's divided by, and this is x factorial. So x is 1 in this case, but what we're actually doing, the, the, the formula is factorial FACT of whatever's in there, and then I'm going to click on this cell again because I'm going to take the factorial of the same C8 cell, and then I'm done. We found the typo. What do you think it was? Um, that looks pretty good. Two point seven one eight raised to the power of negative d two times parentheses parentheses d two raised to the d the c eight divided by factorial of c eight. Oh, they probably put an extra parentheses on the end because I needed one. Up oh, and there it is. Thanks, Excel. Good job. All right, so that is my proportion. Now, if I drag this number down, it should fill in perfectly for most of these. It doesn't like um, zero values. I'd say did total fail. Let's try again. Let's see what might have happened here. I kept the average the same. That number, D2. What, where's D2? Oh. I didn't dollar sign my average. So you gotta always dollar sign your averages. 
that if you want to refer to that cell, otherwise it'll change cells. And let's try it now. C8 is the only cell that is not dollar signed, so that should work much better. Oh, hooray! Now that's the probability of being each of those cells. The zero one is a little bit different, and that is because any number raised to the power of zero is one. So when I take E and I raise it to the negative of the zero, well, I guess let's see what happens. Let me drag it up here. Well, how about that? I guess it did it for us. Does zero cause any problems here? E to the negative mean, that should be fine, times some number raised to the zero power. Anything to the zero is one. So one over the factorial, yeah, it should come out fine. That looks good. Now that is the probability of being in that cell. And what we have to do is multiply each of those times the, samp the, the sample size. We, we measured 39 quadrants, right? And so now we're going to take that cell. I'm going to equal, this is going to be the times 39 category here. Um, this is going to be times 39. And this is going to be equal to whatever's in that cell. And it's going to be times 39 because that's our sample. The 39 opportunities to get there. And now with those probabilities for each category, all these should sum, and you can check the sum, should sum to 39. Let's hope that works. Wow, that works. Okay, I feel pretty good. Um, that means that the total area under the curve there is 39, which is all of our samples. Great. Now, um, we can manipulate this data a little bit so that we can put it into a graph. That's the observed and the expected. From here, you guys can do the chi-square analysis. I'm sure no problem. Subtract them, square them, divide by observed, and add them all together. Right, but you're going to again be using these two columns, this one here and this one here. That's your observed and that's your actual expected over there. All right, so this becomes the expected due to Poisson. Let's just put it in there. Yeah, I replaced my data. And I'll put times 39 above it up here. Okay, now to make the graph though, I want a graph. I'm going to have to put that data next to each other for convenience. So I'm going to take this data here. And I'm going to paste it down here as a control paste as values, just in case, paste specialist values. And this is going to be my observed. And then right next to it, I'm going to take these numbers and I'm going to paste them right next to it. And these are going to be the, um, again, control paste. I'm going to paste special as values. So I don't want all that formulaic stuff in there. And this is going to be my expected. Okay, and that's Poisson expected, if you want to put it that way, which looks kind of nice. Hopefully it'll come out nice. All right, now those that's my graph. So all I'm going to do now to make my graph, I'm going to highlight the titles, I'm going to highlight the data. I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to um, make an insert a graph. Insert a bar graph up here. This one's fine, and that's it. Observed, Poisson expected. It looks great. And I can title this Observed versus Swan Expected. Hard part's done. There you go. That's the graph that I want to see for each location in your data, one for the Little Park staging and one for Ribbon Trail. And here you can actually see how it deviates. You see the middle here is cut out. Um, the expected is this nice clean line, and this is the actual data. So there are more, there's more small and more large collections of trees than expected. So this is probably going to come out looking clumped. It's no accident. I made the data that way. You guys have a great day.